In early 1953, returning German scientists who had been forced to work for the Soviets after the war reported to U.S. and British intelligence that the Soviet Union had an advanced missile testing site at Kapustin Yar, a remote location 60 miles east of Stalingrad on the Volga River. Western intelligence wanted photographs of Kapustin Yar, but it was deep behind the Iron Curtain. No satellites existed to photograph from space. So the only way was by aircraft, but the famous U-2 spy plane had not yet entered service, and the United States Air Force did not possess any other aircraft capable of such a long-duration flight from West Germany to Kasputin Yar and back. Fortunately, the U.S.'s closest ally, Great Britain, did in the Canberra B-2 bomber. At the time, the Canberra was the only aircraft in the world with the range, speed, and altitude capable of pulling off such a daring mission, avoiding Soviet defences. The U.S. made a formal request to Prime Minister Sir Winston Churchill, who gave his assent. The mission would be flown from Giebelstadt Air Base, a U.S. base eight miles southeast of Würzburg in West Germany. The Canberra would fly 1,603 miles to the target via Kiev, Kharkov, and Stalingrad. Stalingrad was later renamed Volgograd. A journey of about four hours at a cruising speed of around 420 knots. Soviet air defences were based on anti-aircraft guns and MiG-15 jet fighters. The MiG-15 could attain a maximum altitude of 50,000 feet. Stripped of all excess weight and with its bomb bay filled with extra fuel tanks, the Canberra was fitted with a special spy camera with a 100-inch lens. Although the squadron responsible has never been named, number 540 was the likeliest candidate and was engaged in secret photo reconnaissance missions over Eastern Europe. Much secrecy still surrounds this mission, with official denials from the British government. However, former Soviet fighter pilots sent to intercept the intruder, as well as an oral history from Robert Amory, deputy director of the CIA in the 1950s, confirm the mission's existence. Several academics have also written about the flight in various publications. The cumulative evidence allowing a fairly precise picture of the operation to be recreated. To avoid Soviet air defences, the Canberra flew the mission at 46 to 48,000 feet, making it difficult for defensive MiGs to engage. One day in August 1953, a Canberra B-2 or PR-3 with a crew of two. Took off in the early morning from Giebelstadt, headed directly east, crossing Czechoslovakia, Poland, and the Ukraine. Soviet air defences tracked the intruder on radar and scrambled fighters in a desperate attempt to intercept and shoot down the aircraft. But the Canberra was hard to find at 48,000 feet. The MiG-15s lacking onboard radar. Eventually, some MiGs got lucky and found the RAF plane. But the MiG struggled to maintain the same altitude as the Canberra. They resorted to attempting to climb up behind the intruder, squeeze off a few 23 mm cannon shells, and then they would stall and rapidly descend before trying again. The Canberra did not deviate from its flight path, husbanding its fuel reserves. But as it approached Kasputin Yar, the unarmed British aircraft was finally hit. One MiG pilot got a lucky shot. A few cannon shells hitting the RAF bomber. The damage was slight, but nonetheless caused a slight vibration in the airframe. The attacking MiGs couldn't keep up. The Canberra made a successful photo reconnaissance run over Kasputin Yar, but the cannon shell-induced vibration caused the photos to be slightly blurred, reducing their usefulness. The Canberra then headed 772 miles into Iran. Then very friendly with Britain and America, and landed after an extraordinary flight of two and a half thousand miles through Soviet airspace at the height of the Cold War. Such a flight was never made again. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below.